Greetings, brethren. Here I am again, coming to you, sharing with you from the Word of God, and trust that your heart have been encouraged as we continue looking in the Word of God and encouraging one another to have a solid faith in Christ. But be reminded that solid faith will always prove to be sufficient. You don't need nothing more than that solid faith in God. He says, enough for me that Jesus saves. This ends my fears and doubts. A sinful soul, I come to him. He'll never cast me. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Daniel is the man that we're looking at morning after morning. Solid faith will always prove to be sufficient. Daniel knew that faith in the living God gives peace and comfort in the midst of any terrible situation. The man Isaiah, he wrote in chapter 26, verse 3, he says, Thou will keep in in perfect peace. Thou here speaks of God. Who God will keep in perfect peace, he says, whose mind is stayed on him. When you are focused, when you are settled, when you are in God, when you are not double-minded, when your mind is just in God, trusting God for every situation, he said he will keep you in perfect peace. If your mind is stayed on him, why? Because you trusted in him. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 18 to 20 says, Then the king went to his place and passed the night fast, and neither were instruments of music brought to him, and his sleep went from him. Hmm. Daniel and the lions then, maybe the lions can't sleep with Daniel snowing. Maybe the lions laying down and Daniel's head is on one of them sleeping, but the king can't sleep. So he rose early in the morning and he went to the den and he cried out to Daniel, Oh, Daniel! Daniel, your God that you saw, has he delivered you? Daniel was more at rest in the prison with the lions than King Darius in his palace with all the comfort and luxury. The question to you is, are you in some den? If you are, then be reminded the lions cannot and will not harm you unless God allows them. Let me say that again. Whatever den you are in, those lions cannot and will not harm you unless God allows them. And if God allows the lions to harm you, remember all things work together for good. Naturally, if God permits them to harm you, then it is for your best. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the call according to his purpose. What God wants us to do most is to trust him as Daniel did. Trust him. May I say to you today, regardless to what you are going through in life, God is able. The question is often asked, is there anything too hard for God? There is nothing greater than for God to accomplish his will in the life of one of his children. God's will is always best for his children. Always best. There's a third thing that I've noticed from this text in regards to solid faith. We just looked at solid faith will always prove to be sufficient. But solid faith will always bring deliverance. Not sometimes, but at all times, solid faith will always bring deliverance. We go to chapter 6 of Daniel, we read verse 20 to 24. When he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Hmm. I wonder if he knew that God had delivered him. He already told Daniel that God would deliver him. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. When I heard that, I wonder if he was shocked. And Daniel said, my God, not just God. He said, my God had sent 
his angels and had shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. Now, is God able to send angels to shut whatever lion's mouth that there is trying to harm you? Yes. God is able to do that. Is it true that the angels of God, they are able to shut the mouth? Yes, they are able if they are sent by God to shut the lion's mouth. He says, For as much as before him innocence was found in me, and also before the O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in God. But notice this. And the king commanded that they brought these men which had accused Daniel. Hmm. These are all the high officials now. And they cast them into the den of lions, them and their children and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones and pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. You see, Daniel did not try to get revenge. Daniel did not even try to clear himself. Daniel left the matter to God. And you know, sometimes we are tempted to take revenge. And when we take revenge, we, we act in the flesh. But we are not to do that. We are to leave God handle every situation. They plot this against him. They went and make sure that this decree was signed so that Daniel would get himself in trouble by reading the word and praying. Daniel ceased not to do it. And now look what happened to them. We don't even see where Daniel prayed for them that this would happen to them. The power that delivered Daniel, I see, this power is still available to deliver you. When Daniel was in the den, someone else was there with Daniel and the lions. God promised that he'll never leave us and he'll never forsake us. For in verse 22 of chapter 6 of Daniel, he said, My God has sent his angels and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocence was found in me. And also before the O king have I done no harm. God angels was in the den with Daniel, who is God's servant. Isn't that amazing? For in Psalms 91, verse 11 to 30, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash their foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. In Hebrews chapter number 1 and in verse number 14, here's what the scripture says. For as much as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Huh. Daniel was delivered by his God. And one of these days, oh, all of us will be delivered by our God. He's able to deliver you even today. The question, can God still send angels to deliver us when we are in places of danger? You know the answer. The answer is yes, he can. Nonetheless, what is even more important he can deliver us with the angel of his presence. For in Isaiah 63, verse 9, In all the affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. What a great thing it is to learn and experience the delivering power of God. Well, my time is up. I will come back and share with you another morning 
in regards to how he delivers. I trust that your heart have been encouraged. May you have a great day in the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you for who you are, for what you have done, what you're doing in and through our lives. God, we are aware that this faith, solid faith, will always bring deliverance. May your people, may all of us have a solid faith in you and don't let anything move us from that. We love you, praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, brethren. You do have yourselves a great day. And remember those who need a word of encouragement. Maybe you can use this devotion to encourage a friend and a loved one. Remember, we are trying to get these devotions across the globe. All you need to do is to send it to a friend. And everyone listening to my voice can do that. And you'll be surprised to know we are on eternal reach. May God bless you. Have a great day.